Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cheryl Technology Channel. My name is Chris, as always, and I'm your host today. And if it's your first time here, welcome to my channel where we do everything technology, and it is we do literally everything you can think of. And in this one, we're going to be looking at, do you need a big server like this to run Proxmox? That is the question we're going to ask today, and I'm going to try to answer it as quickly and as good as I can. Um, in this video, I the reason I know the answers to these questions is because I've used both. In this video, I want wanted to really look at this because it is something that I was deceived about for a very long time and I thought that I needed this big clunky server to be able to do these kind of things and what I found actually was that using something smaller was faster and it draws way less power and this one that's what I want to look at let's get right into it everybody I want to look at the elite desk 800 uh, 65 watt g2 first this is a 65 watt desktop that is a generation 2 of this type of model the elite desk I work for a company that has tons of these and they're starting to get old they're like eight nine years old now and they're beginning to get slow at work anyway they're no longer a good thing to use so that's kind of what I wanted to show y'all the what I found is that these are they're pretty good desktops for certain things like right so you don't want to use them for a, a heavy workload windows and all the policies we're pulling into our systems are there's a lot of them so we they these are not good for that um, we're starting to have issues with them I, as a matter of fact I replaced a Gen 1 version of these yesterday, or uh, it would be Friday. Friday I replaced a Gen 1 version of these because it wouldn't, literally would not do anything. Something was wrong with it. So I ended up taking it out of service and it was useless. There was no reason to keep it because it was like, it was even older than this. It was a Gen 1. So I ended up going with a, with a different one that I got. It's a HP. I can't remember the model of it, but it's a spare one that I had that just, they ended up with. Now, the, if you use a bigger desktop, like or server like this that it's going to run better that is not true as a matter of fact i would actually say that the elite desk runs way better the reason being is because it has a pci express gen 3 slot or a nvme drive and so what i actually did was i took a 256 gig nvme drive put it in there and now this is one that came from work i filled out all the e-waste recycling paperwork and all that stuff was able to take it home with me because what are we going to do with it throw it away i'd rather use it because i can use it here at home and it'll do perfectly for what I want to do and it was an experiment that I'd want to do for a while so that just happened to work out so that's what I did and what I have found is that it is so much faster so for instance I'll look at a, a um at kind of the way this is now if you scroll down it's a little bitty thing it's about that big around or that big it's running an Intel this is the chipset it's running this is the graphics this is the power rating that it has and it has the i7 processor so it's the upper end one because we we get the good ones we don't get the cheap ones um it has none of these in it um solid state drives i have a, a 256 gig drive in it but i have a 500 gig over there that i might put in later Let's see i've got a 500 gig ssd i would like to put into it to store vms separately from the other stuff but it doesn't seem to make a difference it seems fast no matter what i do uh here's your transfer rates your maximum uh, ram i've got 16 gig in it now so you'd probably have 16 gig per slot um so what i found was that it's faster in terms of everything it does everything so much faster you got to remember the dell t410 is from a very long time ago from 2012 this is a very old server and although i have sas drives in it and i have like a raid array in it and it's running it runs really good but it's slow because the transfer rates are a lot slower than nvme think about this this is from from december 2012 look at this december 2012 think about that and this desktop here is from 2015 but it has a gen 3 pci express now what i really want y'all to look at is that because of all these things that i found out i now have a different view of servers i no longer have the view that i had before because i thought that i needed something big like this to do this and i don't i am running one of my virtual machines with two gig of ram and it runs perfectly fine i have no issues with it i have another vm that i'm running on this thing it's so fast and so what i found is that when you have an nvme drive running a virtual environment like this there's a reason that people want to use these and it's because they're so much faster now does that mean that i can't take my big server and run four of these stupid nvme drives in it and it not work yeah it probably would and a pci express card like this one so if we go in there and we look at pcie uh, card for nvme let's do this right here look at how many of them come up look at the prices 10 bucks i can run like this one's 18 
18 bucks. Look at this, John. $18. And I can have dual NVMe drive. What the hey? So that's kind of what I'm at. That's kind of what I'm telling y'all is that, like, if you could run it in this bigger desktop, but why? Because the bigger desktop has two power supplies, and they are, I believe, each, uh, let's see if it'll tell me what the power supply size is. Yeah, they're 520. I think this is the one I have. I think mine's a 580 watt. So I have two of those in this machine. <clears throat> two of them. Think about that. They're running all the time. The other one has a 65 watt power supply. Think about that. The, the cost difference. It's going to cost a fifth as much to run and it's faster. So that's, I, I don't believe these falsities where they'll say that a bigger server is faster. Because they're just not. Now this thing has two processors in it. Mine does. And the mine are four cores. Both of them are four cores. So I think it's like 16 logical cores. Yeah, it's 16 logical. So that's kind of where I, I think y'all should really, if you're if you're looking to buy a uh, server, I would first look at the smaller desktop market because if we do a search on this, you can get them for 120 bucks. $120. And you can have a full-fledged server. This thing, and it runs fast dude i can install the os the other thing i noticed was the os install time the os install time was about a minute and a half that's the fastest i've ever seen it do that i've never it's normally like five to ten minutes and i, I installed ubuntu server and it was over a little over a minute so that's kind of what i want y'all to see is that you don't necessarily have to have the biggest equipment in terms of this kind of stuff to be able to do the work the work can be done by something much smaller the other the only thing you got to really remember is now you have limited resources like my other server, the big one, the T410, I have 64 gig of RAM. This one, I'm limited to 16. That's the, really the only difference. But I've allotted four, four gig for one of them, two gig for the other. That's six gig. That leaves me with 10 gig to run everything else. That's quite a bit. The only thing you're going to need is if you go with something bigger, if you go with a lot more virtual machines, then you're going to need, of course, a bigger machine. Now, there are machines like this that have a lot more RAM in them. And I'm sure you can get machines like this that have tons more RAM that go up to 64 gig and you could run a full fledged just a hoot nanny kind of pc you could run a bunch of vms and stuff so that's kind of what i wanted y'all to see is that and this machine compared to the weight of this one this thing is freaking heavy i don't know what it weighs y'all but oh my goodness this thing is it's got to weigh 40 or 50 pounds it's heavy and so that's kind of what i mean but it'll hold 10 up to 18 terabytes that's the other thing if you need it for just little local projects at your house you don't need anything this big but if you want to go full fledged you want to do it all the way then you need need something like this but that's kind of what i wanted to tell y'all um in conclusion i hope y'all enjoyed this video i really think this is important because don't ever think that you have to spend i think this server when i bought it like nine years ago was i want to say 350 but i've spent quite a bit in it since then i mean I've, it's got a quad core nick quad nick in it it's got it's got all kinds of crap now but with that said thank y'all for watching if you have any questions put them down in the comments and i'll be glad to answer them as quick as i can i always answer everybody's uh comments no matter who they are no matter where they come from i will answer them as quick as i can it's always i try to always answer that time uh like thank y'all for watching may the lord walk with each and every one of you and bless the steps that you take if you don't know him reach out to me at cheryl technology at gmail.com that is cheryl technology at gmail.com and i will be glad to talk to you lead you to him or just listen to you talk about problems i that's what i love that's that's why i do what i do um i really want y'all to know him that's my main objective so in this one i hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, everybody. Peace.